Greetings, friends. My name is Alex King Harris, also known as Rara Avis, coming to you from my cozy studio in uh, currently very snowy Salt Spring Island, BC. And I just wanted to share some experiences and insights and tips about this thing called keto that uh, has all of a sudden, you know, been, been taking everywhere by storm. Um, so just a little quick bit of background. Uh, for me, earlier in my life, I suffered a, a, a severe intestinal trauma due to a motor vehicle accident. My intestines burst apart. I had liver damage. I had uh, you know, a lot of trauma to my large intestine, some parts of my small intestine taken out. And it was quite a, a, an ordeal. And it was maybe um, almost a decade before I really started to learn what was going on in my gut and how that was causing problems in my brain. And I started to really uh, understand how to heal that. Now, for me, partly that was uh, finding some, some really specific doctors when I, I lived for a time in Ashland, Oregon. Uh, Dr. Bonnie Nedro, who's a naturopath, and Dr. Rod Newton, who's an amazing chiropractor and researcher. And what I found by working with them and doing some very long, slow, medically supervised cleanses was that it's actually a very scientific, technical, uh, protocol-based approach to really restore your gut and get it back online. Now, I had the advantage of working with these doctors. I certainly would say if you're thinking about doing keto, it's really helpful to have a naturopath or a functional medicine doctor, somebody on your team who knows what they're doing, who can help you navigate. Because if you want to get the most out of it and help your body transition to burning fats without causing any complications, it's really good to have uh, not only the doctor, but also some, some capacity to research what's going on inside of your body with blood tests and stool samples. So for me, when my gut is going off, I can usually tell my skin is a little bit weird. My moods are weird. I'm more prone towards depression. And what I'll do at that point is get stool samples analyzed at a lab and they can look and see what's going on in my microbiome so what what probiotic flora are flourishing and what what flora are either missing or not flourishing what flora might be considered dysbiotic meaning it's the wrong kind of bacteria and it's it's overcrowding or populating the good bacteria they can look and see if there's parasites growing in my gut uh, they can check and see if there's any other uh, fungal infections, particularly yeasts that are growing in my gut. And then they can also take a look at my enzyme functions, how my liver and kidneys are doing, how my pancreas is doing, um, and what my digestion looks like as far as how my body's dealing with fatty acids and fibers and a host of other things that, that change in composition as it moves down your intestinal tract. So with all that in mind, it's really good to get to know your shit. No, for real. Get to know what's in it. When you send it to the lab, they send you back a report. And it's super helpful as a baseline for getting started to decide what strategy you're going to go with. Now, when I last had my stool tested, my naturopath immediately recommended a ketogenic diet because I had extremely high levels of candida. And I also had dysbiotic flora. And I had a parasite. And I had problems with my pancreas. And so she formulated some supplements for me, enzymes and fiber supplements and other vitamins and minerals and probiotics to help rebalance my gut while recommending I shift over to a ketogenic diet. Now, what's really interesting about doing ketogenic diets is it's actually more of a metabolic reset. So what it is, is about a six month process that you do once in your life where you teach your body how to burn fat. Now, it burned fat when you were an infant, <clears throat> assuming you had some access to a fatty substance like breast milk um, or a high fat formula. And at that point, when you're in ketosis, your body's burning fat mostly instead of carbs. Your brain, which right now, if, if unadjusted, needs a lot of carbs in order to function, your brain is actually functioning on high fat levels. And during that time, your liver is producing ketones, and ketones are anti-inflammatory by their very nature. So this six-month reset, where you're reducing your carbs down to very little, and you're increasing your fat intake, helps your body transition over to something it already knows how to do, which is to burn fat. Now, there's lots of health benefits to doing 
keto and there's been lots of press about it so you know you don't have to take my word for it you can certainly go out there and research on google um the first off obviously is the anti-inflammatory nature of how your liver switches into ketone production but once you get over the highs and lows of carbs and sugars where insulin is having to kind of work overtime to level out your blood sugars what you'll find is you have a very different level of stamina because you can burn fat which you have in store for you know you have days of fat storage without really getting hungry or feeling that blood sugar drop so your your capacity for cardio increases um, for me what i notice is my mood stabilized almost right away because i'm not getting the carb high drop after that <clears throat> where you go sugar high or carb high and then you kind of feel low afterwards and then you're sort of hungry and figuring out the next thing that's going to give you that that hit so it starts to just smooth your way out um i would say for me there was also a lot of relief in my gut <clears throat> that just helped with my regularity and my rhythm of when i was hungry and when i ate and how i ate because it was just a lot easier for me to process fattier foods than it was to process carb rich foods and now that i've i'm almost i'm about five months in i really have no desire to go back to carbs like heavy carbs i used to eat a lot of potato chips and bread and sugars and i was sort of craving it and what's amazing is your microbiology will will influence how you crave food so if the, if you have dysbiotic flora in your gut they love sugars mostly right so they're going to want you to eat sugary and car high carb foods and so you find yourself craving things that you actually don't really need and then maybe you'll have a belly ache afterwards um so those were kind of some of the the benefits you know when it comes to actually doing keto you want to really set yourself up for success now there's two books that i would recommend one is metabolic flexibility by dr bonnie nedro she's done keto for a really long time researched it thoroughly she really knows it inside and out and she sets you up in a really good way to understand it and the other is the new atkins book basically the atkins diet was like the original low carb diet and he has a bunch of strategies in that book for how to start mapping out your diet figuring out how many carbs you need what food sources you're going to get them from there's a lot of meal plans and ideas in there so when you start thinking about keto, I would say just start thinking about it. Don't make any changes. You know, spend, I spent a month just planning out keto, noticing what I was already eating, noticing um, what it would be like if I needed to choose a low carb option, particularly if I was eating out. Um, I started thinking about the foods that I was emotionally attached to and deciding, okay, how would I transition away from those foods? Am I ready? You know? And then I spent about a month in that transition place and I transitioned by drinking, you know, really high fat coffee in the morning, the bulletproof coffee, which gave me an initial dose of fat and caffeine and the caffeine really keeps, you know, your brain alert um, and keeps you away from this sort of foggy feeling that you get when you start restricting carbs out of your brain. Uh, and then, you know, I would slowly go into having some carbs in the afternoon, let's say, if I really felt like it and just experimented with you know moving from fatty to carbs within a day just to see what it felt like before i started really going into the restrictive space the other thing i did was started to work out more definitely working out is super helpful it helps burn any excess carbs and keeps you feeling great alert good blood oxygen levels etc did a lot of breath work highly re recommend breath work as a like morning and night and in fact, if if you uh, have ever done the presence process before and you want to pair that, it's by Michael Brown, it's amazing. Uh, and I'll go into that in another video. If you if you pair the presence process with doing your ketogenic work, they, they work together really, really well. So um, what I would say after that is you just have, there's some things you need to be careful about. You can over mineralize your kidneys uh, with the high fat, and high protein diet so you want to get some blood work done to check your potassium levels and check your mineral levels in general and see if you need to maybe supplement uh, for me i'm supplementing on potassium citrate because i've had a history of kidney stones and urinary tract infections and the potassium citrate helps dissolve any potential minerals that are building up in my kidneys um, you want to make sure you're getting enough fiber because fiber is 
quite missing from a very low carb diet. Um, normally you'd be getting fiber through a bunch of sources that are in grains or you know high carb vegetables and so taking a really good fiber supplement is really helpful um you know i i ordered a really good ketone meter that's really made for diabetics uh it's by a company called precision extra and they have the best testing technology uh that that my doctors have found you basically picking pricking your finger um after every meal about an hour after the meal reading your ketone levels and as long as they stay around a 1.0 or above that means you're in ketosis and um, once you've tested a meal and you know it keeps you in the zone 1.0 to 3.0 um, really above 3.0 it doesn't really matter you want to be careful if you were getting up way high like towards 6 or 7 or 8.0 that's that would certainly be a, a problem um, but basically, you can stay in that zone with the ketone meter, and once you've tested a meal, as I said, then you don't have to test that again because the strips are actually like a dollar or two a piece. It's not cheap. Um, but you keep a log, and you just make sure that you stay within that zone, especially for the first two to three weeks when you're doing extremely low carbs. You want to stay in that zone to really help train your body. Uh, also, make sure your electrolytes are up while you're in the training zone. Uh, you know some sea salt in water with a bit of lemon and lime juice can really be helpful uh, and it's easy to get either dehydrated or have low electrolytes so those are kind of some of the basics um, you know you really notice a lot of changes in your body it's quite amazing once you're done the six months then you can go back to going in and out of ketosis within a day where you might do you know fats and, and protein throughout the day and then in the late evening you might introduce some carbs and just see how that feels and I would also really recommend doing this with a friend or with a group uh, it really helps to have the group support and to be able to kind of like feed off of each other of what's working and what's not working and also then again if you can team up with a naturopath or a functional medicine doctor just to have their guidance and their support and to kind of formulaically go through the process with them uh, that's going to really help and make it so that you feel really successful so um that's keto if you got any questions feel free to reach out to me uh, there is in the description below uh, a link to a page where I've got the two books that I'd recommend and some more tips and um, that's all for now I hope you get to enjoy some keto time and uh, I wish you well take care <music>